Hello my friends, I'm Daniel Talley, the Note Yourself Guy, and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now if you're tuning in for the first time, you're probably wondering, the Note Yourself Guy, man, what's this channel all about? Well, let me tell you something. My message is very, very simple. My goal is simply this. I want us all to develop a better relationship with the Lord. So the question then becomes, hey, Note Yourself Guy, how do you do that? Well, my content is positive, uh, it's inspirational, it's entertaining, sometimes funny, and sometimes admittedly a little bit corny, but I can promise you this. Every single time, you hear me? Every single time, there's always a big message. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever sat on a blessing? In other words, has God ever given you an idea, a thought, a skill, a talent that you were supposed to turn into a business opportunity and you didn't? Listen, mister, you wouldn't know a business opportunity or blessing if it came and smacked you in the face. I am such a person. Uh, God has given me several things that I've sat back and done absolutely nothing with it. In other words, I've done jack squat. You got that right, doctor. Now, thank God, in my case, that God is super patient and he has given me yet another opportunity. Today, I'm going to start a three-part series. It is entitled, Don't Sit on Your Blessing. Now listen, if you want to be inspired, motivated, encouraged, then you may want to pull up a chair and listen very closely because this episode is for you. After serving in the United States Air Force and graduating from Howard University, H-U, you know... Sorry about that. I just love my school. I am a bison for life, and that's for sure. After graduating from college, all I ever wanted to be was vice president of human resources at some Fortune 500 company, making a bunch of money. Now, I have to tell you, the word does tell us if we delight in the Lord that he will give us the desires of our heart. Little did I realize at the time what I thought was a desire really wasn't a desire at all. But you know what? God humored me, and he said, you know what, pal? Okay, you think you want to be the VP of HR? Okay, no problem. Go ahead. So what he did was that he began to uh, set me up on a journey. Um, and I, quite frankly, I was doing pretty well. I was uh, moving up the ranks and uh, making a bunch of money. But in the middle of all that, a business opportunity came my way. There was a guy in church uh, who came to me and said, hey, Daniel, how would you like to go into business with me? And I said, uh, doing what? And he said, uh, I want you, I want us to go into the cleaning business. I looked at this dude and I said, Look here, brother, uh, I don't like cleaning out my own toilet. What makes you think I want to clean somebody else's toilet out? Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with cleaning out toilets if, if you're into that kind of thing. And I'm not into that kind of thing. Um, but uh, I tell you what, what I told him was, let me go home and let me think about it. Now, folks, I have to tell you, I had no, I, I had no intentions on proceeding with this business venture because, as I said, you know, I had gone to college. I went to the military. Uh, why would I want to waste my time cleaning out somebody else's dirty, stinky toilet? Now, I have to tell you this. Those of you who have actually used a public restroom. Do you know how nasty some of those places are? And now this guy wanted me to be one of the people out there cleaning it? Man, you must have lost your dog on mine. So I told him I'd go home and pray about it and see what the Lord had to say. And boy, did the Lord have quite a bit to say. So I went home and I prayed to God about this business opportunity. And to my surprise, God said, Daniel, I want you to do this. And I'm looking up at the sky like, uh, really? But why? Man, look here. I got a good job. Why I need to? I mean, why are you trying to get me to do this guy? I, I don't want to do this. But God said, Daniel, I want you to do it. So reluctantly, I said, okay, Lord, if this is what you, is this what you want me to do, fine. I'll go ahead and do it. And I kind of said it with a little bit of an attitude, to be honest with you. Um, now, listen, I know I know none of you all out there in YouTube land uh, would consider yourself um, a hard-headed Christian. But right now, if you've never seen one, I am a hard-headed Christian. In fact, some people might even call me a knucklehead. This is a black head of mine. In other words, God has to tell me stuff several times before I get it. And oftentimes, he sends a confirmation. And just like, just like in this case, he sent one because I went back to the guy who offered me the business opportunity. I said, okay, dude, I'll help you do it. Hey, look, I don't know nothing about cleaning out no toilets, but I went to business school. Maybe I can do some marketing, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'll be happy to help. Well, not happy to help, but I'll help. Um, so about a week later, there was a minister in our church. Now, I had never met this man before. Now, of course, I knew his parents because his parents were members of the church. So he's he's on the pulpit. He's speaking in tongues and all that. And he says, there, you there sitting on the front row. I'm looking around like, who, who is this dude talking to? Because I'm the only one sitting on the front row. He points to me and he says, that's right, brother. I'm talking to you. And what God wants you to know is that he is that a business opportunity has been offered to you. And he wants me to tell you that. He has given you everything. I mean, everything you need in order for you to be successful. So fear not. And I said, fear not. Now I have to tell you, the naps on the back of my naps on the back of my neck stood up because there's no way that that man could have known that. So being the doubting Thomas I am, I bum rush him at the end of the service and say, look here, bro. Did he tell you anything else? He looks at me and he says, sorry, Daniel. Uh, that's all I got for you. 
So that was God's way of saying, look, dummy, I've already told you I want you to do this. So at that point, I knew for sure this is something that I had to do. So we started Genesis Cleaning Services in August of 2001. So 20 years later, we're still in business. Now, let me tell you how much of a blessing this has really been. Now, as I said, back during that time, I was making some pretty good loot, right? And, um, you know, I was you know, on my way to, um, to becoming VP of HR with some big company somewhere, I'm sure. Um, but uh, unfortunately, the, the good paying job that I had, uh, I would be the victim of a layoff. Uh, and this is during uh, 2008. And as, as you guys may recall, that was a time when we was going through this uh, little thing called a recession. Right. So uh, jobs were not exactly that plentiful at the time. So uh, fortunately for me that the cleaning business was, uh, you know, we were starting to do pretty good, you know. Um, and uh, so by the time I got laid off, I went to my wife and I said, wifey, you know, I love you. Right. Uh, look here. Um, I think I would like to continue on with this business. And uh, if it don't work out, then I can go out and get another job. Are you OK with that? Now, let me tell you something. Now, I know some of you may comment and, and, and say I'm a male chauvinist pig, but I got news for you. Um, I haven't met a woman anywhere. You hear me? Anywhere. And I've been all over the world. Uh, there's one universal truth about all women, and that is simply this. Women like security. Now, when you start taking away, you know, basic things like a house and a car and your lights and gas get cut off, then uh, even the most docile woman will flip out on your behind and, and uh, she will give you the business. Now, don't get me wrong. I know, you know, hey, that can be said of anybody. You know, we all men or women alike. We all like security. But I'm just saying in this case, um, you know, my wife, she was she was straight up with me. She said, look here, brother, if you want to take this little hobby of yours and uh, try to, and, you know, and, and try as long as you can take care of this household um, with this little hobby of yours, then you go ahead and clean away. But if you cannot. You take your butt back out there and you uh, get yourself another uh, HR job. So I said, okay, honey, deal. I'll go ahead and do that. So um, we went on and, and, and did the business. And I have to tell you, the blessing that this business has had for me uh, has been truly extraordinary. What am I talking about? Number one, um, we were able to go from zero employees to as high as 20 employees before COVID hit, of course. Uh, and um, we've been able to uh, I was able to be a tremendous blessing to my customers because oftentimes when you're in there cleaning uh, office buildings late at night, uh, oftentimes there are people working there late. And just like a bartender, you know, people who are drunk typically tell the bartender their problems or people who are working late at work, working late at night, a lot of them got problems too, you know, uh, and they tend to share some things with you. And so this was an opportunity for me to pray with people. It was an opportunity for me to share my faith with people. It was an opportunity for me uh, to offer people godly advice. Um, truly, this was an unintended uh, benefit for owning or for having this business. Um, and, I, and, 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 I, and I consider it an honor and a privilege to have had an opportunity to, uh, to serve God's people in that way. And let me tell you something. Unlike us, God knows the future. Uh, he knows exactly why he wants to do certain things. Now, at the time, I didn't realize this, right? But... Um, Later on, at, when I started the business and after I had lost my uh, my HR job, my wife got pretty sick. I mean, she got pretty ill, uh, so much so that uh, I had to actually take care of her. Now, I have to tell you, um, if I had had a regular job, in other words, a nine to five type of job, I probably would have got fired because nobody would have allowed me to spend as much time away from the job uh, as I had to because I had to take care of my wife. And I have to tell you, um, you know, I get sometimes a little teary out about this because um, <laughs> I'm not really sure what I would have done, um, you know, if, if, if this had happened, um, you know, while I had a regular job. Because, again, I'd have been forced with, well, do you take care of your wife or do you run, run the risk of, you know, losing, losing your job, uh, which, wouldn't, which would mean that you couldn't take care of your wife because you wouldn't have any money in which to do so. But God worked this thing out and, and, and you know, to the point you hear people say, uh, use this term. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Absolutely. Uh, God did it and he continues to do so. I got news for you. God is a bad dude. Now you may be saying, Daniel, tell it. Note to self, God. What are you talking about, man? Well, let me explain to you. God can take a task that you may find to be repulsive or a task that you may find to be uh, mundane. He can turn it into something magnificent. So in my case, cleaning out dirty, rotten, stinky toilets, uh, he took that situation and he used it uh, for for good and by that I mean he would put these little thoughts in my head uh, and I and I call these things poor man's proverbs now you may be asking what's a 
poem man's proverb. In part two of the series, Don't Sit on Your Blessings, I'm going to talk about how I took these poor man's proverbs uh, and put them into a book. Um, you, you definitely don't want to miss this one because uh, many of you will be inspired by it because quite frankly, uh, when God told me to write a book, I'm like, write a book. Uh, dude, I was a C minus student in uh, English. Um, you sure you want me to write your book? Stay tuned. Uh, it'll be something in it for everybody. Talk to you later. You guys have a great week.